This month's lesson goes out to the team from the Department of Defense. These students fly in from all over the world just to bring me this shirt. That's really nice, and I really appreciate it because these flights, they're seriously long. Now, in this problem, we're working with a regular tetrahedron. That's the solid with four equilateral triangular faces. It looks kind of like this. Now, in this problem, we have to find the height of the regular tetrahedron. That's the distance from a vertex to the opposite face. So I think of a segment going from that vertex. It goes perpendicular to the opposite face there. We want the length of my finger inside this tetrahedron. Now, the tetrahedron in this problem has edges of length 5 centimeters. That means the side length of each of these triangular faces, 5 centimeters. Well, we need to find the length of my finger in there, inside this 3D geometry problem. 3D geometry problem, we break out one of my favorite 3D geometry strategies. We turn this 3D problem into a 2D problem. And we do that by taking a slice of our 3D problem. We call that a cross section. Now we have two keys to choosing a good slice. First, your slice has to include the thing you care about. We care about finding the length of my finger in there, so our slice has to include my finger. Second, our slice has to include something you know about. We know the edges have length five centimeters, so our slice, we're gonna include an edge. So we're going to take a slice that includes the edge and includes my finger. You ready to take the slice? You ready? Here we go. Oh, uh, uh-oh. I don't, I don't think taking a slice of my model here is going to help very much. We're going to have to take this slice. Our minds. All right. We want a slice that includes this edge and my finger in there, the height of the tetrahedron. What does this slice do to this face over here? We take this slice, we get, oh, we get the altitude of that face of the tetrahedron. So we take a slice, we have edge here, we have the altitude of this face over here. What happens when we come out the bottom? When we come out the bottom, we're gonna be right down the middle of that bottom face. We're gonna have an altitude of that bottom face. So our slice, it creates a triangle. On the sides of that triangle, we have an edge of the tetrahedron, and then we have an altitude of one face and an altitude of another face. Now, all these faces are the same, so these two altitudes, they're the same. This slice makes an isosceles triangle, and that's really nice because it's way easy to find the altitude of an isosceles triangle. So. Let's take this thing, we're going to turn it, all right? We're going to turn it so we put our edge on the bottom. And those two altitudes are over here, over here. Those two same altitudes are up here now, so we can really see that isosceles triangle. We're going to draw that isosceles triangle. We're going to draw it right up here. And we have our edge along the bottom there. That has length 5. And then these two, these two are each altitudes of a face of our tetrahedron. And these faces, they're just equilateral triangles. So we can find the length of each of these altitudes. Go ahead and draw one of these equilateral triangles. This is one of our faces right here. And we want length of the altitude. So this is an edge of the tetrahedron, has length five. This is a 60 degree angle. We have a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. This altitude over here has length 5 times the square root of 3 over 2. That's this length. That's this length. We're going to write these over here. 5 times root 3 over 2. We have all the side lengths of our Sosceles triangle here. We can find this altitude. This altitude splits this base into two equal pieces because our triangle is isosceles. And now, wait a second. Oh, you see a problem? I see a problem. This altitude we're finding right here, the altitude of our isosceles triangle right there, yeah, it's the altitude from 
right up here, the midpoint of this edge, to right down here, the midpoint of this edge. It goes from here to there. Uh, that's not a height of the tetrahedron. I can't run my finger from here to here. There's stuff in the way. The height of the tetrahedron over here and over here. But it's not going from here to here. This altitude, not the altitude we want to find. We want to find this one right in here. It goes from this vertex to the middle of this face over here. We want to find that height. And this height, not the same as this height. Mm. Now we could do a little work to figure out this length or this length and then use the Pythagorean theorem. But I see something a little sneaky here. We can use this height find this height. Check this out. You take this height and you multiply by this base, you get double the area of the triangle. And if you take this height and multiply by this base, you get double the area of the triangle. So this height times this is the same as this height times this. So if we find this height, we can then use it to find this height. Let's do that. First, we break out the Pythagorean theorem on this triangle right here. Now, we could go ahead, square this, square that, subtract, take the square root. That's a lot of work. I see that this is 5 halves, and I see that this is 5 halves times the square root of 3. So I'm going to think of a simpler right triangle. I'm going to think of this one. Little right triangle, hypotenuse is the square root of 3. One leg has length 1. We use the Pythagorean theorem on that. We're going to get square root of 2 is the other leg, because 1 plus 2 is 3. This squared plus that squared equals that squared. And then we just scale this up by 5 halves. We get 5 halves. We get 5 halves times the square root of 3. And then we get this altitude right there. Is 5 halves times the square root of 2. And again, our goal is not this altitude. Our goal is this altitude right here. We're going to call this altitude here the one we really care about. We'll call that x. This times this equals this times this. 5 times the square root of 3 over 2 times x equals 5 times 5 times the square root of 2 over 2. Now we can find x. Cancel out of 5, cancel out of 5, cancel out of 2, cancel out of 2. And we have x equals 5 times the square root of 2 divided by the square root of 3. Then we're going to multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 3. Clean that up just a little bit. And we get 5 times the square root of 6 divided by 3. Although i got to tell you seriously, you know, that's a perfectly good number too. But we like it when our denominators are nice integers instead of having a square root in there. But now we're finished with this, ready for the next problem. All right, in this problem we have a cone. Big cone here, radius is 12. And then it's sliced, sliced right along parallel to its base as it's shown right here. And we remove this smaller cone, this piece up here, and we're left with the piece down here. Now the height of our smaller cone is 15. Our goal is to find the volume of this piece down here. What's left after we remove the top cone? Now this little piece down here it has a name. It's called a frusto kind of a fun word. Say it with me. Frustum. I didn't make that word up. It's really a word. You can go look it up later. Now, 3D problem. Hmm. How do we turn it into a 2D problem or what 2D problem does this resemble? Taking a slice like this that's parallel to the base. Oh, this looks pretty familiar to me. Let's look at what happens if we slice it straight down along the altitude here. Slice it like this. And now, this probably looks pretty familiar to you because you've probably done a lot of problems with similar triangles. The triangle up here is similar to the triangle down there. In fact, the whole top cone is similar to the big cone we started with. We're going to break out that similarity to solve this problem. Now, they tell us that this right here, this height of the small cone, is 3 fourths that of the original cone. So that means this is 15. That means the whole thing is 20. This piece down here is 5. 
Maybe that doesn't matter. We're looking for the volume down here. And well, we can find the volume of the whole thing. We could use our similarity, find the radius here, find the volume of this and subtract it, but I have a better idea. Something a little tricky. And as you know, I like things that are a little tricky. We're going to use that similarity. When we have two three-dimensional figures that are similar, the ratio of their volumes equals the cube of the ratio of their corresponding lengths. That's a lot of words. So I'm going to write an equation down here. The volume of the small cone divided by the volume of the large cone is the cube of the ratio between their corresponding lengths, their heights, or their radii, or whatever you want to choose that are corresponding lengths. So the volume of our little cone there is 27 64ths of the large cone. But we don't care about the little cone. We care about what's left after we pull that off. We care about the frustum down here. It's a fun word to say. So the small cone is 27 64ths of the large cone. That means the frustum, which is the rest, is the other 37 64ths of the large cone. We can find the volume of the large cone, so now we can find the volume of the frustum. The volume of the frustum is 37 64ths times the volume of the big cone. Let's find that volume. At one third, because we're dealing with the cone, we're going to square the radius. And we're going to multiply by that height, which is 20. And of course, we have to multiply by pi. Can't forget pi. All right, 37 64 times this mess in here, we have some simplifying to do. We'll take that 12 squared, that's 144. We're going to divide that by 3, it gives us 48. 48 and 64, common factor is 16. Leaves a 3 up here, leaves a 4 down here. That 4 and that 20, another common factor. 20 divided by 4 gives us 5. So up top we have a 3 times a 5 times a 37 times pi. All right, 15 times 37. Well, 15 times 40 is 600. We're going to go down three of those 15s. That'll get us down to 555 pi. And if you don't believe me, go ahead, use similarity in here. Find the radius right in there. Find the volume of the little cone, subtract it from the volume of the big cone. You better get 555 pi.